Come again. Uh -huh, it's now it's now better. Come again. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Initially it wasn't quite clear. Oh, okay. I said it wasn't quite clear. I'm doing connected. Yes, they have. Okay, so uh, it is time, so we will start. Um, I know the license is an issue, availability of license is an issue, but the one license is not for only one person. Uh, as and when you want to um, do something, you just have to install the company laptop on your working machine. And then you, you, you just have to ask for the license and then to, do whatever you want to do. Uh, maybe practice, you want to practice. So the license is not for only one person until we get another license and then add. Okay, so uh, we know that uh, LeafRock has taken over <coughs> the explicit way of modeling. LeafRock is actually an implicit way of modeling whereby you select your drill hole to snap to. I mean, the, the samples, rather than using, uh, uh, why, I mean, uh, segments or strings, digitizing strings around your whole body. So, and a lot of companies have moved to LeafRock. Uh, I hardly see companies using datamar wireframes or um, uh, SEPAC solids to run estimation. And so they need to, just have a refresher. I know a lot of you already know I mean, uh, how to uh, construct a mesh in a uh, leaf form. Uh, this is just for us to remind ourselves uh, the process, uh, I mean, how to go about it. So um, if you look at, if you can see my screen, um, there are procedures or methods uh, when you are going to construct a wireframe in leaf form. First of all, you have to develop um, a sulfide boundary. I know over here we we say the pyrite is our our interest, our mirror of interest. Uh, so you have to develop a sulfide boundary. And that will envelop all your data. It means that outside you wouldn't find any mirrorization. And the reason why we are developing that one is not actually going to be used uh, for the major estimation, but it's just to be used for our domain zero. You know, when you are able to select all samples inside the loops, or you call it meshes. In LeapFrog, we say meshes. In DataMind, we say wireframes. In SEPA, we say solids. They are the same. It's just terminology differences. So when you select all your data inside your nose, definitely there will be scanty or spotty, spotty samples that will not be included in the nose. And in the estimation, that is what we call the domain zero. They are far away. They are discontinuous. So you can't put everything inside your wireframe or your mesh. So some will be left out. So the reason why we are constructing uh, this sulfide boundary is to envelop all the samples that we, we, we have. So that uh, at the end of the day, we will have to, con I mean, uh, we'll have to do trifle and then get I mean, the model outside our loops, and that will be our domain zero. We will use that to estimate our domain zero. So we just need a broader, a broader wireframe or a mesh to be able to uh, run that estimate. That is our domain zero. So in LeapFrog, that is the first thing, the first wireframe. Your, 
your sulfide boundary or your sulfide envelope. And then afterwards, you develop your uh, shears. It's not the, the shear zone that we know. The sh that shear in leaf frog um, is actually an area where your mirrorization is concentrated. You have an intense mirrorization at a certain point. If you look at the sample, you have a, a trend. There's a trend. Okay, so you have an intense mirrorization at a certain point. And that is what the you are constructing a shear. And in other words, the hanging wall, foot wall. It's not the foot wall that we know in geology that when there's a fault, the plane of the fault, the block that is at the upper part of the fault is the is 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 the hanging wall, and that the one that is lower is the foot wall. Or the old definition that um um the place that the miner hangs the lamp is called the hanging wall. The place that the miner hangs his foot, I mean steps his foot, is called the foot wall. It's not that one. It's just two two surfaces. That is actually a wireframe that is enveloping your mirrorization, the intense aspect of your mirrorization. So when we begin, you will, you will understand that. And then afterward, after the shears, they will now go to the mirrorized room or the wireframe. Eric should switch off his, his video. OK, so yeah, so after you construct the shear, then you come to the the nose, and that is where you have series of loads. Um, Isasi all body, we don't use the vein system for the modeling. We use what we call the indicator, where you have um, you say okay, samples that are greater than the thresh, a certain threshold. For example, point three should go inside the shell. And samples that are below point three yeah. threshold should go outside the shell. And you will have a very big wide frame and after that you use your four zones to dem demarcate each of them. Over here, I mean um this place, uh, what do you call it? Uh Akwesusu uh, in crime and other the other piece. I think some of them, the, the, most of them use the vein system, which we are going to tackle, and after that, we'll go to the indicator system. Yeah, um, clear it. Yes, sir. The, the terminologies are a bit different and confusing. Okay. You see, when we talk, when we're talking about underground, we're talking about the loads. But when we come to the surface, we deal more with domains. So they are the same thing. Yes. So they are the same thing. The, we call them loose and we domain them and we call them domain, domain one, two, three, whichever you want to call them. So domains and loose are the same. Domains and loose are the same. Actually, the uh, sulfide boundary I've already explained. Um, that's where your domain zero is. Hello? Yes. Uh, have you, are you using the, your, 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 your phone or you're using a PC? Uh, increase your volume, let's see. Wow. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm back to you. Wow. Okay, uh, you go out and rejoin. Go out and rejoin and let's see. So, sorry, uh, somebody is not hearing me. Um, so, yeah, so what uh, 
I mean, the senior citizen is saying, uh, domains are the same as the laws. They are the same as the wireframes. So just like I said, wireframes are the same as the meshes. They are the same as the solids. But just that different softwares and then the terms they use. But when we talk of domaining, we are just trying to say uh, a group of things with similar uh, features or characteristics. So you group them. So this is a domain one, domain two, domain three. For example, uh, in the the quad veins, where in Obuasi, for instance, where you have a lot of quad veins, uh, you can get a grade of 50 grams and above. So automatically, usually we, do, we because the court has higher grades, we, 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 we assign them as the court domain. So we are just grouping similar things. That is the domain. So when you come to the domain zero, the ASP boundary, I said that you used to estimate the domain zero. Um, it's actually mostly waste. So they are, I mean, they, that's group of, a group of assets that do not have a uh, good grades mostly. But sometimes, like I said, you have patchy patchy high grades within them. But if you cap them, yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, well, uh, you, you got to lift up your hand and ask question if something is not going very clear to you. We know that the introduction we've been introduced to the sulfide envelopes. But if you come to our setup, Asanko, we don't have the sulfide envelopes because our style of mineralization is a little different from Obuasi underground. If you go to Obuasi, the mineralization is more associated with the sulfites, which is predominant more of the asinopyrite, as well as the veins and the shears. So if you don't understand anything, just ask a question that where is the sulfide envelope? Okay. Okay, so I hear, I think I hear that you people, uh, asinopyrite is associated with your gold. I'm uh, sorry, uh, parite, right? Yeah. Am I correct? Hello, I can't hear you. I understand you said the parite is associated with your gold, is that right? Yes. Uh, good. Yes. In crime, there's a strong association uh, with the gold as far okay. as crime is concerned. But uh, like you said, the sulfur is quite different as okay. far as the sulfide mineralization is concerned. Okay. Good. So let's take in crime for instance. If we are logging and we are getting uh, we are logging, we are getting parite. So at the end of the day, there should be an envelope. If uh, for anything the parite wasn't recorded, that is why sometimes they 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 do the domaining and then they use the pit vault. I mean the pit solid or whatever to estimate the domain zero. That is the ideal thing. So if if you don't have that envelope. You should have the pit that all the data sits inside, all your mineralization sits inside. Then you use that one to estimate your domain zero. However, these are theories. Let's uh, go to the main thing so that we don't waste time. I'm launching Leapfrog, so it takes. Okay, so if you if you launch leapfrog, this is what 
you will see. You have your locals, you have your projects sitting on your locals, all projects you have worked with. So you go to new. If you go to new, you have to give the project a name. You have to give the project a name. So So this is the name I've given it, Abore Project. Uh, so I want to, let me put my data in, um, I'm not sharing or let me, can you see the, can you see my screen, this, Okay, can you see the borrowed drill holes? We can't talk, we can't hear their voices. Can you see a borrowed drill holes? Yes, we can. Okay, so that is it's on my desktop, so I'm cutting it. I want to put it in my database. Okay, so if it is there, I want to browse for my project. I want it to be stored there. So that is where I want my my project to be stored. So you okay it. So now Let me go back to the project. Okay, so <coughs> this thing we are not new. As is our measurement data. I for leaf rock whether it's in your form two, uh, whether your BHID is uh, whole underscore ID or is BHID, uh, leaf rock will accept. It's only determined when you don't have BHID. Uh, by default, you have the BHID form two. Bearing uh, represents uh, azimuth that um, determine will be looking for. And this is our special location. What will tell us our special location, which we're all familiar with. And we have our little, uh, our I mean, the minerals, and then our surveys that gives us our directions. So that is what we are going to load. So you just go to drill hole data, then right click. So when you right click, drill hole data. You have the first one, which is import drill holes. So these, <coughs> just they are CSVs located somewhere you want to import. That is the first one. The second one is the drill hole from uh, Vice Central. We, here, uh, it appears they were using Central, but they have, uh, I mean, uh, they have stopped. So you can import them via Central. You can also import the drill hole via, I mean, uh, Open database connectivity. It does a database of, um, in a, I mean, what the companies, if they are using ODBC, uh, that's open database connectivity. You have to import from the database street. That is where you go. And we have the last one is the Aqua. So ours is the CSV. So we just have to choose that first one. Then the order is the color first. So I'm going to my my folder. So I select that. If you select the color, then automatically the interval tables comes in. There's one 
that is left. That is the the mirrorizations. So I just have to pick that one in addition. So these are what I'm importing. So let's pause and ask them at Okay. Are you? Are, are, is there anybody? Uh, is there any question? Are you okay? Bishop, this one there is cool. cool. For this time, this stage, they are okay. So, uh, so now, the first one is color. So you see that this is not important, not, I mean, uh, this is not important. So you have to select those who are not important. If you want to import them, you select them. If you don't want to import them, you can, you can leave. But we can decide not to import this data set or import them. Doesn't sort of any importance. So with this, there are category. You have um, letters. There are categories. If they are only numbers, they are numeric. So these are categories. Hello, this new new end. So now BHID is already the whole ID. It's already marked, so we don't have to. We don't have to do anything. So you come to the whole time. You can also take them as categories. The maximum them has already been marked. The eastern, the northern, the the elevations have been marked. This project, if you want, you can import. If you want, you can leave it. Actually, they don't have any importance in this our modeling. So. Except, except that maybe with the project you want to filter, if you want to use to filter, if there are two different data sets, Abore and Inkra, and you want to filter, you can you can import it if you want, but everything is Abore, so we don't need it. So the second one is the, the survey. So take category. This has automatically um, map if uh, when you are importing you need to take note of the the dip you see that over here the negative point uh, dip points down it has been thick if you don't if you don't check it your drill holes will plot up they will be they will be plotting up the the color will be down and then the end of hole will be up like you drill the holes from space so it's good to check it. If you uncheck it, that is what will happen. But it's good to check it. I think this version of Leafrock automatically does that. So next. Again, that is the axis. So um, category, this, that, that, that. So this one, sample type, if you want, you can import it. That is if you want to filter. If you want to filter, maybe you have RC and DD, and you want to filter RC alone, or you want to filter DD alone, you can bring it in. If you don't want to, so there's no need. Um, AUPPM, everything is, there are, there are numbers, decimals, so it's numeric. So the negative. Negative yes, so the negative values you can, if you want, the negative values after that, we can omit them or replace them by 0 0.005, or we could have actually uh, replaced them by 0 0.005 before importing, whichever we want it to be. There are some with no samples. There are some with uh, negative values. So after that, you can decide. The lowest detection limit you can replace with 0 0.005. That's and, it. And the blanks. And the blanks. There are where, blanks. Where we don't have any value. Yes, where we don't have any value. If you want, you can omit them. 
yes, uh, we should let them be aware of. Okay, yeah, I just want to finish the import the error and then we'll yeah. see how the errors are being fixed. Okay, so so next we have the little data sets category. We have this that that priority. I think everything here is resolved, so we don't need it. Little has already been mapped, so I want to choose. So the now the priority. I don't know this this little. Uh, Data that's about already data. I don't know the priority. What it, what it is? Maybe they prioritize them. I don't know. Everything here is actually zero zero. Exactly. Yeah, it's zero zero. So we don't need that. So. Oh, you don't need it. You don't need it. So I want to I want to give this um, this is lithology. So that's lithology. So just choose lithology. Then oxidation has already been mapped. Uh, the regolits, regolits and whatever. Uh, if you need them, we can import them later. So I think weekly oxidize is a weekly oxidize and, and fresh and whatever. So if you need them, we can import them later. If you want to import them to fire, so that's it. So next. So the last one is the minerals so i'm going to choose the category and that's uh, i'm going to choose that so you wait for it to import Okay, so this is the data. You have, you have, you don't have arrows in the color. You don't have arrows in the service. You only have arrows in the the assets. So what you need to do is just right click and go to fix errors. So we have overlapping overlapping um, samples there. We have overlapping samples there. Uh, so these are overlapping samples. We have uh, samples with no color. We have samples with no color, and we have uh, no samples. We have no samples too. So we need to fix fix them before we we we, we continue. So the overlapping you can ignore. You can ignore the overlapping. Just um, select one. And scroll down, control, shift rather. I've, I've, I've just highlighted one and um, press the shift, the shift key. So I'm ignoring that. So I'll just highlight one and scroll down with the shift key. So when you are done, are you safe? So These are samples with no color, so you can go inside the hole and go and pick uh, anything. Maybe if you have hard copies, whatever you want to investigate, you have the color you want to 
go back and refix. That is it. But if you don't have, you can do nothing. So that is it. So over here, these are the assays. Uh, no samples. There are no assays on them. It's just a from two, and some are negatives. So what you can do is. We have the missing value, so you can just replace them by 0 0.005. Come again. So Is we it? just the <laughs> background value, I mean, the lowest detection limit. <coughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, we this is. This is training exercise. So please, if you want to ask question, just prompt and ask question. We want to replace all the, all the absent records with 0 0.005, and no one is asking question. And we have minus 0 0.01. We want to replace it also with 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.005. No one is asking question. Do you understand why we are we are replacing absent record with 0, 0.005? At the same time, we are replacing minus 0, 0.01 with 0, 0.005. And what is the meaning of minus 0, 0.001 in our database? Please ask questions. Okay. <clears throat> I think the lab, lab, the labs differ. Uh, in Obuasi, the lowest detection limit is 0 0.005. The argument has always been that uh, an assay cannot return, I mean, analysis cannot return zero or it cannot return negative. So what they do is we replace our values with 0 0.005. And in fact, in, even in Asanko here, the script has been designed in such a way that any va uh, value that is less than zero or zero, it is being replaced with 0 0.005. But in, I mean, the samples that come, what I see the lowest detection is 0. Point, I think it's 0 0.01 or something. 0 0.01. 0 0.01 here. Ah, uh -huh. so. The reason why we are replacing it with 0 0.005, the 0 0.005 is the uh, lowest detection limit. In fact, if you have, if you run an estimate, uh, and and then and then you get negatives in your this it will bias your your estimate. That is what I've understood. So we don't use negative to, I mean, run estimates. So that is why the script has been designed to to remove zeros and 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 negatives. And then replaced by 0 0.005. Yes. Okay. Um, let, let me also chip in this one quickly. Maybe someone might ask, why are we not using, instead of 0 0.005, why are we not using 0 0.001, but rather 0 0.005? Well, the one of one school of thought in geochemistry, and it's an uh, it's a industry standard that where you the lab reports below detection for you. Take this when the lab reports below detection, you are and you want to convert that into numera that is number you take the lab detection limit and you divide it by two so asanko our lab detection limit is 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 if we divide by two you get 0 0.005 that is why we replace all our detection limit values to 0 0.005. Senior fellow is talking. OK. Do you understand? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want yes, to ask a question. Okay. Yeah, uh, in, in, in data mine, we try to uh, incorporate the minerals in our lithology. Mm. But in this very case, I've seen that you are separating these two data, the lithology and then the mineralogy. Is it because of the envelope that we may want to buy there, this and the sulfide envelope that we may have to develop? That's why uh, we are doing that. Or is a requisite uh, a requirement for you to get that uh, mineral, mineralogy data? I think the, the minerals, uh, they are also tapped on their own. If you are logging, you have from two, maybe as an operate, from this to this, we have as an operate, that to that. So they are, they have a tap on it. So in the database, when you are extracting, you have the minerals on their own coming out. You have this okay. tap. Okay, Eben, let me, let me also add a little bit to um, what Gletison uh, is saying. Well, we are separating the lithology from the mineralization. Mineralization field, that is what, that is your question. Why are we separating the lithology and the mineralization field, isn't it? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Well, whenever you are dealing with geological data, you like to understand the data the behavior of the data. And if you are taking lithology, for example, if you visit any of our pits, we have the major lithologies, the sandstone, the sillstone, the, the, the shales, and all those things. That's why you can lock them. And when it comes to the mineralization, the mineralization, all that we can see from our dread chips are the sulfides, the predominantly the pyrites and the and the acinopyrites. And the the sulfide could be found either in any or it can be found in any of the lithologies. You can find it in the sandstone, the granite the sillstone, the shell, you can find it in all these things. But the percentages will vary. You understand? Yes, the percentages of this surface mineralization within the individual lithologies may vary. And you wouldn't know from scratch what controls your we are interested in gold. What controls our gold? Is any of these sulfides having any relationship with our gold? So in this case, when you separate the lithologies from the mineralization, when it comes to the statistical analysis, or when it comes okay? to the correlation analysis, okay. When we are correlating things to see what to combine with what as a, a, a domain, okay, or as an envelope or as a zone, then you have to relate one by one. Then the picture will come out so that you will say that, okay, now if I take the sandstone as a unit, we have sandstone units that are barren, no gold in it. And we have sandstone units with sulfides that may be mineralized. So if you do your analysis and you see that sandstone units with sulfides has also gotten some gold, then in your envelope you can put them as one family. And the sandstone unit without the sulfide could also be in one family, though they all come under the clan of sandstone or come under the umbrella of sandstone, but they might be different people. Okay? Yes, so sir. that's the importance of, of 
picking all those details and bringing them as a different field so that when it comes to the statistical analysis, trying to understand your data, you can use all these fields to relate to one another and come out with a, with a story. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So in our, and, and I guess the in the tablet you have that field, eh? mineralization. Yeah. Yeah, we that okay, so that is it about the import and then fixing of the errors. So I close it. So the next stage is uh, called the grouping of lithologies. Grouping of lithologies. Uh, you have meta sediments, you have metavolcanics. So you need to group them for the purpose of, um, uh, I mean, for geotechnical purposes, if, 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 if geotech people want to know um, where where is uh, is this place very hard rock? Is this place very soft? Is it deformed? Is this place graphite? For that purpose and for the purpose of estimation, you know the rocks too. The the density varies. That is also another thing. So we need to group the lithologies. And then if you want to model them, you model them uh, differently. And then perhaps if there is graphite or Chloritic schist that you want to also model them then for geotechnical purposes. So that is also another. So we need to group the lithology. So to group the lithologies, you go to lithology. If you go to lithology, my case is on lithology, then you right click, then you go to, uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Go to new column and then uh, group lithologies. I hope all, all, uh, you can all see. Yeah. Okay, so this is what will come. The uh, base column is data set automatically, but you have to change it to lithology. They give it a name. So I'll call it group underscore rock. <laughs> Is that okay? Then you okay it. When you okay, it, this is what will come. These are the all the little uh, the, the course in the lithology tab. So you need to group them. That is if you know, if you know the uh, acronyms, they are mean they they are for me. Then you group them. I don't know what AP is. I, 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 the only thing I can identify here is the K. We have the dike. GRA, I don't know whether it's graphite. Uh, we have the Griwaki two here. We have the Griwaki, then I think no sample recorded is here, NRA. Uh, there are a whole lot of the things here, course here, I don't know them. And uh, we have this. Uh, so we have the the SS could be sandstone. So for the training purposes, I think we just need to group them like that because I don't know whether this is a boring and it's like it's is is the old thing. I mean, is the they are old data. Uh, are we okay? They are old data which we may not know which uh, is which ideally we should be able to differentiate i mean to fish out all the meta sediments and group them and fish out all the metavolcanics if they are graphite we should fish them out and then group them but i don't know if uh, we know them i don't know them actually so i'm going to group all A's at one group all b's at one group all c's at one that's what i'm going to do but the but this is just for a training, it's not for any assignment. So if if you get data in future, you want to group, you can group based on the, I mean, you can group meta sediments, metavolcanics, if, if they are working. Yeah, 
so be consistent in our love. Yeah, so is the you see now we have spoken about the modeling of the various mythology. It is the reason why uh, actually we need to make uh, demonstrate uh, professionalism when it comes to the login. Uh, we don't just know, especially the court. If if you are modeling the court, maybe this distance there's court and maybe it's ignored or the the weight is misplaced. At the end of the day, it will affect the density that you are assigning to that. Is it the actual rock that we said it is? So it is very, very important for us to do our best when it comes to the login tool. So I'm going to group all these. So I'll just. So in fact, if you look at this, you can play with them. These are the code. So you see that. I can generally mute all or unmute them. So if I highlight one, then control, press control, I'll pick this, this, that. I'm grouping them. So you click on new group. So I just, we don't know them. If they were meta segment, we just write meta segment, but we don't know them. So, so if you drop down here, that. These are the groups, the rocks you group them under A's. It come to the B, we don't, we just have one D. So I just new group. Can leave it BR. So I have C. Yeah, this C, 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 C. I'm grouping them. I hope you all can see. Then I click on new group. So that is C. You drop, you see them, you see them here. They are those you have grouped. Then we have D. This might be di right. This is dike. So new group. So that is the D. Yeah. Then we have the F. So I, I I hope I, I hope we are clear. We have the the Fs. So if I highlight them, the new group. So that is F. Then you have the G. G G G R G S G T. This green wacky. So new group. So that is the G. Then we have the H. H is only one. So I can just move it there. I think this might be lateral. So new group. Then we have the N. NG. So no call. So new group. So that new group will be N. Then we have OV. OVB. So the O's. So if you highlight them and then you click on new group. So that is the O. Then we have the fill lights. Fill lights, we know that can stand on its own. Then we have the QV. This is quartz, eh? Yeah. So that could be the QV. Then we have the saprock, eh? SST or saprolite, whichever. So I'm high. Control, control, and then you click, you highlight them. Then you click there on new. Is one more S. Okay, yeah, there's another S. S I. This is uh, S S. S S. So the S are many. So new group. So new group. So that's the S. Then we have the T's.
but uh, I think it was a V, no, there was no V. So these are two, I can just give them others. So when you are done, these are the group in the C's, and these are the D's, these are the F's, these are the G's, H, L, N, O, Philite is on its own, Q, V, the S, there are many, the T's, and then the others. So that is it about the grouping. So you click OK. That is it about the grouping. You can display, if you look at the top right side, we have show lithology, I mean legends. So these are the legends for the little. You can use this to make them solid. Automatically it gives you big. I mean, so if you are you seeing my case? I think there's a pointer here. There should be a pointer somewhere. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, It's PowerPoint that is now. It's PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. I hope you people can see my case. Sir. Please, yes. can you see the case? Sir? We want to hear your response. Yes, sir. yes we can. Okay. okay. So. This is the outcome of the grouping, but you see that they are cylindrical and they are big. The line radius is, is 70. The line radius is 70. That's the thickness of the hose. So I've just clicked on, I've been seeing the Marquesa. I've clicked on that. Make line solid. Then um, I'm reducing this maybe to five. So these are the lithologists. So if you want to see them, I've clicked on the edit colors. Edit colors. I can mute everything. What is seen there are traces. Which one you click here, show traces, they will all go. Now, if I want to see only A's, these are only A's, lithology with the A's. If I want to see BR, it's only one. These are the lithologies with the C's. If you want to model them one by one, that is how you do it. You have to filter them. The D, I'm not even seeing. Uh, yeah, so they are here. So is the S that were many? So these are the S. So they are the lithologists. Now, after grouping your lithologies, what you need to do is you have to create a merge table. The essence of the merge table is you want to group all, you have to merge all tabs with, which has from two, the interval from two. For example, the first thing we are going to create is ASP, I mean, uh, pyrite boundary or sulfide boundary. So you have to create a merge table for the sulfide boundary. So when you create a merge table for it alone, you can use it merge table to construct maybe load or shear. Each and every, uh, what do you call it, stage. The, the sulfide will have its own match table, the uh, share will have its own match table, the lows will have their own match table, port will have their own match table, lithology will have their own match table. So each one with its match table. 
So to create a match table, you have to go to drill holes, right click. Then you see new match table. So this is a new match table. You can rename it. So I'm going to, I want to be consistent. So I'll give this one A underscore match table. Okay, match parrots. So that is what I'm going to call it. That's a name. Eh? No, that one is 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 going to come from here, the mirrors. So I will choose my assets. Then I will choose rock. Then I will choose the quote and then the star. I, I don't want data sets. Uh, so these are the mesh tables. These are the mesh tables. Uh, what you have in the sulfide boundary. If you go to the shares tool, it's the same, but you can remove the the the, the mirrorization out, the mirrors out. You can remove the mirrors out. If you go to the lows, it's the same procedure. So you okay it. So it has finished running. If you if you have a question, you pause and ask me. Okay. So the this is the match table we have created. So if you drag it into the scene, this is the pro, the project tree. If you drag it into the scene, and then you see if you can toggle, you can change them. This is the mean star. This is the RC. Okay, so that is the match table. What we want to do next is we want to create a legend for the assets before we continue. So if you drop down and choose the assets, automatically, you remember I went to this make line solid to make the lithology solid. Same way I'm going back to the assets. I just want to click the make line solid. They come cylindrical form and then I will I will change here. I will change the line radius maybe to five. Make them smaller to view. Automatically, Leafro creates a legend, and that legend is a continuous legend that it just gives you a default legend, but you can create your own legend. So we want to create our own legend before we continue. So to create a legend, you go back to the the top right and you drop down. If you drop down, you see new uh, column up. If you click on that, the first one is the continuous. That is what by default what LeafRock has given. One the discrete one. Okay. So over here, um, <clears throat> see that the you can see the highest RC is three five three. So we want to start with zero point five. So this plus, if you click on it, you are adding. If you click again, you are adding. Now from infinity to 0 0.5 from 0 0.5 you can give it maybe let's give it 0 0.7 so come 0 0.7 All right.
поставить там на это. I'm deleting this, so I'll do it again. Point two five. Is this just a legend? Too? Okay. So uh, legend. Af after that, we just do this. I think this uh, zero, <clears throat> 0 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, 0 0.7 to 1.3, 1.3 and above, see the, I think this is okay. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> have you seen how I've created the legends? Anyway, pay much attention. Uh, if, if you are unable after that, the recording, you can send it across, but pay much attention and understand it better. <clears throat> so, this is how to create the legends. So, I can change the colors. You just click on the color. I'll give this one green. And I'll give it blue. Mm. I'll give it green. I think this is fine. Magenta. Yes. This is lavender. Oh, it's a light magenta and a lavender. Okay. It's okay. Eh? <coughs> okay, so <coughs> so you can name it. You can name it. Uh maybe or like Whichever, or you can decide to leave it like that. It's just for training purpose. You can leave it like that, or you can name it if you want to. So then you close it. I don't like the magenta color. Mm -hmm. It's not visible. I mean, it's not conspicuous. Mm -hmm. One yellow. Uh, I like yellow, okay. red. So have you seen where I've gone back? I want to edit the, the colors. So I've gone back to the the drill holes here. Yeah. Yes. This one, if you click on the cylinder, you delete it. But the pencil. I'm click I'm at uh, the pencil. Okay. I'm clicking to edit it. It's one hour, but even 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 the time has passed. <laughs> <laughs> the time has passed. It's five four. It's always four to five. So like where we can stop for them to try their hands on up to the legend. Mm. Okay, so I, I thought that we use one day to do the ASV boundary because one week will not be enough for this training. Okay, so the the leaf rock there's there's some party here they are calling and also we don't know whether uh, is there is there is are there some there's of you has problem tomorrow yes it continues tomorrow are there some of you who have problem in importing the data please respond do we have some people who has problem importing the data Hello. Hey Ben, we can't hear you. Are you on mute? <laughs> no, we <laughs> asked you whether from the so far what we've done. Yeah. Do do you think anyone can import the data? Sure, sure. 
Do you think, I think anyone can do the grouping? Yes. Yes. And how about the legend? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You see, I just want to know. Um, is it that if it is if today is your first time of seeing how to import the data, it will be important to revise on how to import it. But if you already knew how to do it, then then it's good. Uh, but looking at the time and your time to the one hour actually is not enough. Yeah. I don't want to bore you with something that you already know. That is what I'm, I mean. I don't want to go. Some, some of us, this is our first time, so you are not boring us at all. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So what you do is that uh, I, I know some of you have the license on your computer. The African version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I have it. I have it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the default itself, is it installed on your computer? I mean, not your personal machine, but the company's machine. Yes, it's on the main piece, masterpiece. OK, so what I'm going to do is I will release the license for you now so that you go and uh, check it out on the company's machine and you try your hands. That is if you have the time on the import, the import of maybe tomorrow we have to increase the time if you have time. Yeah, so um, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, do you think um, starting at four is okay for you, and the one hour is okay for you. If not, we can change the time and extend it a little bit so that you have ample time to because it, it entails a lot. And if we are just going by one hour, one hour, we may be rushing and you may not get all the concept right. Can we start? Yes, can we start? Can we start earlier than four? No problem. What time? What time do you suggest? Uh, maybe three three thirty to five thirty. We can do two hours. Three thirty to five thirty. Okay. It, I mean, is that consensus? Is everyone um, agreeing to the time? There's some people who are suggesting three to five. No, no problem. You people see yourself so and then please yes. let let's you, coordinate. I think well. we should also be considering uh, the meeting, the three thirty meeting also. Yeah. So what do you suggest, Mike? Mike, your hand is up. Oh. I'm also thinking about this podcast, so much of time tonight. As I'm getting ready to come away. So, basically, it's not going to be five, four, three. I mean, five, three. Nobody comes to some of us. Okay. Well, if, if you are at the website, the best thing you can do is to come to the office early so that you go through then what the tasks are to control the work. And to actually do. Eric, Eric, Eric's hand is up. Yeah, okay. I wanted to know if we can break it into two, like having two hours for that period, I think there will be a lot to do. So we have one uh, morning session, then probably three to four, another section, one uh, I don't know if that can be done. Senior citizen said it's impossible. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm also um, suggesting something about the data. If we could get maybe a data that we are familiar with, 
and maybe data from uh, maybe dynamite or in crime. Yes, I'll give it to you. I'll send it. I'll send it. Maybe we, can, we can all get maybe a training. Uh, maybe we can select one particular data, maybe in crime, drill hole data or dynamite drill hole data, and use that for the training. Okay. But we've not finished the first um, uh, uh, discussion, and you've slotted in the second one, the timing. So, do you think from 4 to 5.30 will be convenient to everyone? Um, said, if we are coming uh, from Obotan to Isase for night shift, when we switch to night shift, it might be a little bit of an issue because the bus also leaves Obotan to Isase at 4.30. So we are trying to see if we can get to uh, the office at 4 p.m. Uh, um, we say it's not a continuous training. There are breaks. So if you want to be part, then you have to sacrifice a little bit. In that case, you got to leave Obotan early to be at Esase and be part of the team. So, okay, maybe we will leave it for you, discuss among your team, and let us get the conclusion by the close of the day. Okay, sir. Right. So please, if you don't have time this evening, then you have time tomorrow morning, try and get the license and then practice a little bit. Okay. Okay. So right. we thank Craig Clatison for today's session. We we'll continue tomorrow when we get the time from you guys. But Let's take this serious because you can put it on your CV. And if you put it on your CV, be ready to defend it. So let's take it serious and learn. It's free. You are not paying for it. And uh, we appreciate his time uh, giving us to this training. Tomorrow, I shall be on RDO, but I know that I will leave early get to Takrade and join you guys. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.
prosperous